You know, mayflies are so important in the fly fishing world, and one really needs to know about all the stages of a mayfly's life. On this conversation, we're going to talk about what the trout are looking for at different times of the year. We're going to learn everything from nymphs to dries and when you should throw them. All right, Tad, mayflies, something every fly angler needs to know, from yes. the expert to the novice. But there's different stages, different, you know, presentations that we need to know about. So what do I need to know about the mayfly? Yeah, absolutely diff different stages. We're going to start with the nymphs, okay. right? So there's the tried and true patterns that have been around forever when you're filling out your fly box. The first one's going to be a hare's ear, been around for a very long time. Uh, simpler fly to tie, not quite as simple as this other one, the pheasant tail. Mm -hmm. These two have been around for a very long time. Excellent patterns. All beginners should have at least one or two in their box, and they'll fish, you know, any, they'll imitate anything in that small range. Um, another one with a little bit more flash as we get into, you know, maybe kind of drawing the fish with a little bit of uh, more artificial flair yeah. would be the Copper John. This is kind of a Copper John Prince hybrid. Prince nymphs can also imitate those mayflies pretty well, as well as some of the stone flies. Mm -hmm. um, but plenty of flash will draw the fish in just like our next one, which is a flashback pheasant tail. So pheasant tail pattern with a little bit of flash on it. Then we get the flashiest of them all with the Rainbow Warrior. The yeah. Rainbow Warrior is another one, more modern pattern. Everybody needs to have some in a few sizes, right? right? Simple fly, gonna attract fish from a long ways away or a longer way away than all the other ones. And sometimes they just have a hard time resisting it. That's good, that's the one I need. Yes, yeah, yeah. and then uh, another modern one, kind of a, uh, you can have a, kind of joins a little bit of the flash with the natural, is a Frenchie. Mm -hmm. Th this is a Frenchie pheasant tail style, so a little bit of a hybrid here, but kind of does the same thing, gets down in the water quickly, and uh, gets to where the fish are. Then our last one here is called a Quildagon. This one, very streamlined, very dense, gets down very quick. It's a natural imitation. So when you really need to fool a finicky fish, this is probably the best mayfly nymph to do it with. So th those are going to kind of wrap up the nymphs for fly fishing. Okay, so we're just staying deep with these? I mean, how are we presenting these? Yes, yes. These are going to be down on the bottom. We want these as close to the bottom as we can get them most of the time. Okay, year-round? Um, yeah, yeah, year round. So, you know, year round, there's going to be uh, nymph larva, mm -hmm. you know, mayfly larva in the water at all times. Okay. So always going to be available to the fish. All right. So now I'm, I'm assuming there's another stage. Yes. So yes. What is that? Our, our next stage are emergers. Emergers. So emergers, they're, they, they're living down as nymphs. When mm -hmm. they go to hatch into their adult forms, there's that intermediate stage where they go from the river bottom up to the surf surface. Those are going to be your emergers. Um, our emerger patterns can be anywhere from down low in the water to just under the surface or at the surface. Okay. Um, a great pattern we don't have here, we'll include a little picture, is the RS2 or WD-40. Both can imitate emerging mayflies a little bit lower in the water or they can, you can get them to ride right on the surface depending on how you're fishing them. The next one we have here is a little shuttlecock. Um, this one has a little bit of CDC up top. It's going to sit where that CDC is above the surface and the tail end of the fly is still below the surface. So that mayfly is trapped under the surface tension of the water right. and can't break out. Very vulnerable time for them. That's when the trout are going to key in on them and really take advantage and eat them. Okay. Um, the next one we have here is kind of in a little bit of a hybrid between a merger and a dry fly. It's a conventional Adams fly, which we'll talk about here in a second. But a good tip if you're fishing dry fly, you're seeing them come up to the surface and they're like, oh, they're eating dry flies, they're eating dry flies. Can't get them to touch, you know, your Adam's fly or some of your other dry fly variants. Um, clip the, the barbels of mm -hmm. the feather, so the lower part of the feather off of that Adam's fly, and it'll sit lower on the water and imitate those emergers a little bit better. You will increase the number of strikes you get and you'll fool those finicky fish. So, That's a good tip. Yeah, good, good, good tip in between here that has bailed me out a lot yeah, <laughs> you know, around the world it, it's done very good job so from there we're going to transition into our dry flies i've already mentioned the adams fly one of the oldest fly patterns in existence and it's still used for a reason it flat out catches fish there's kind of two variants of it now there's the more modern parachute mm -hmm. adams which 
the feathers are going to be more on the top side of the fly, whereas the normal atoms spiral around the hook. So the hooks, you know, maybe a little bit in in the water, in out the water, water a bit. type deal. Um, but excellent fly patterns. Most of the mayfly variants from there are are offshoots mm -hmm. of those. Um, the next one we have here is a mosquito. A little bit different than the Adams fly, but same same type idea. It'll imitate your smaller mayfly patterns a little bit better. Yeah. Um, whether you're looking for you know canis flies or blue wing olives, just those smaller guys, definitely a better option in that mosquito. Trichos are another one. Summertime, we'll get to that when we go seasonality. Okay. Um, and then the last one we don't have here, but um, definitely worth mentioning is the um, Wally wing. So it's it's a wing looks like the mo most realistic fly pattern I've seen to match the hatch, of course. Okay. It is a good pattern when they're in their final stage. So the after the flies turn into adults, there's a done stage. So broke has broke the surface of the water, still flying around. After they break the water, they're gonna go hang on some trees, nearby foliage on the river, and they're gonna molt one more time. Mm -hmm. That is when they're gonna turn into spinners, which is the fully uh, adult variety. That Now they can go lay their eggs once they're spinners. Right. So after these spinners lay their eggs, they'll die and they'll flutter back down to the surface, usually outspread wings, you know, their body function totally gives up. With the spinner patterns, that Wally wing is a great idea to throw. You can, you can manipulate the wings, flatten them, you know, make them spread out, um, but it's gonna do a great job of imitating those spinners. Okay, I got a question. Uh, what are you looking for now? If, if they're rising, we know throw the dry flies on the surface. Yes. What makes you go from a nymph to an emerger? What are you seeing the, the way the fish are acting that will make you change from that nymph to the emerger. So with the nymph, there's not going to be any surface activity. Right. Once you start seeing surface activity, it's usually going to start with emergers. More times than not, they're going to be eating emergers, not dry flies. People are like, oh, they're eating dry flies, and they'll start throwing their dry fly yeah. patterns. And they'll get maybe a bite or two, but sometimes you're not going to get you, – you'll throw your patterns like, oh, this is exactly what flies I'm seeing in the air. You'll down, have it down to size, color, everything. They're like, they're just not biting it. A lot of times it's because they're eating a little bit lower, either just under the surface or, you know, in the middle or, you know, half above, half below the surface. That's when your emergers are big. Okay. So when a hatch just kind of starts to pick up, I will usually go to my emerger patterns first. Okay. Yeah. The, another good technique when you're out there, throw the dry fly on a front fly, then have a trailing fly to an emerger. A lot of times that emerger pattern is going to pick up more fish more quickly. Then you can switch to two emergers if you do want to go to stay with a two-fly rig. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can just go to one fly, have it be that emerger, even though they're a little bit tougher to see right. visually in the water. Um, you know, if you're tracking your line well, you'll know when they rise to it. So, and then if you do like the two-fly rig like you're talking about with the dry on top and the emerger, and they're hitting the dry, then you'll just go straight to the dry yeah. the entire time. Yeah, I might just throw two dries or, you know, or or just cut the uh, tag line off and just fish the one dry. Okay. And uh, time of year again. You said the nymphs are kind of year round. Yes. But the emergers and the dries is that something that can happen year round or does it depend? Nymphs will be year round. So mayflies will have the most diverse hatches throughout the year, right? So whereas the caddis are spring and fall, may, may or the stoneflies will be more spring into early summer. Your mayflies can go from. Through, from you know late winter all the way through to late fall early winter um your first ones of the year are going to be your blooming olives right smaller smaller flies um as you get through to summer typically the size of the mayfly is going to go up more and more so you know just depending on where you are in the world there's plenty of duns quill patterns mm -hmm. um that'll hatch off um throughout the spring months that's when you really got to get good at picking out what you see in your eyes, checking those spider webs while you're walking down the river, see what's been hatching lately. Looking for details. Yes, yeah. Attention to detail is huge when it comes to dissecting the hatches. We'll, we'll do another show on that, you know, as we go down the road and right. we get a little bit more evolved into the sport. Yeah. Um, but then when, once you hit summertime, you know, then you've got some big one. Your, your hexes up in the Great Lakes area, 
they'll be, you know, that's where they're most well known. Mm -hmm. But as you get out west and down south here, we do have some hexes. Um, and then it kind of goes in reverse to the fall, you know, not as many in the late summer, early fall, but as we get towards fall, you'll start to get your quills again, your blue wing olives again, and then it's, you know, back to winter and then the cycle will start. So over it's again. just opportunities with mayflies year round. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There, it's good to have them year round anywhere you are in the world. Okay. Um, there's, you can bet if it's cooler water, there's going to be mayflies around. All right, man. I appreciate you breaking that down for me. Yeah, no, no big deal. Well, I hope you guys learned something. I certainly did. If you like this content, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. We got a lot of other videos we'll put down in the links below. And guys, check out our Live Well podcast every Thursday night from 8 to 10. We appreciate you, and we'll see you soon.